Today we're going to take you on a virtual tour of Canalside, Huddersfield Town's training complex. A lot has changed here since the club moved into the complex a few years ago, particularly since promotions to the Premier League, when over £6 million has been invested into updating and modernising areas of the training ground. We'll show you some of the key figures that are involved in the training ground development and the day-to-day -day operations of Canalside who can take you through the detail of what we're doing here. Delighted to say I'm joined by Chief Executive Mark Devlin. Mark, first of all, just looking at the training ground, it looks so much more professional, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it was important to us that we landscaped the front and did what we needed to do to tidy it up, to have the welcome signage. Obviously then the road coming in, we've got disabled parking and so forth. Uh, and then immediately you come in, obviously quite security conscious for obvious reasons. We've got the first of the, the um, automatic gates that are here. Uh, straight in front of us and obviously then we've got the brand new security set up here which allows us to have uh, security 24-7, have it manned professionally to make sure that our investment in the training ground and everyone within it is safe. We're going to speak to a number of people throughout this video, not obviously only just yourself Mark. Um, Mark, unfortunately you've got the incredibly unglamorous job, firstly of showing us around the security centre, let's go and have a look. <laughs> So Mark, you said it's, there's been a really heavy infrastructure, IT infrastructure. That, that starts here, doesn't it, in, in the security centre? I mean, the, the security of players and the professionalism of the place really starts from inside here, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, this is the first, uh, first port okay. of call. And if you look around the offices, you will see not only oh, right. coffee machines, but uh, <laughs> you'll also see um, extensive use of security. Um, we've got Carl here who's looking after everyone today and uh, yeah so it's um, again IT's played a big part as I said earlier in making sure the place is, is secure 24-7 and that everyone who uses the site is safe. Absolutely, it's, it's a big change from where the training ground was before obviously having the ability to, to look at CCTV for example across the, the whole site, monitoring who's coming in and out, it's so much safer than it was before. Absolutely, I mean, I think that's every modern sort of training centre has got to have that. Um, and this place has certainly, we've, uh, as I say, invested heavily in that area. Uh, I think you, if you ask Carl, it's, it's much, uh, it's better for the staff to use it now. Before the staff were, um, you know, they were quite often open to the elements and so forth. Much nicer working facility uh, for staff, much nicer working environment for staff as well. Um, so yes, I think there's a huge, huge improvements on, particularly the welcome, the way we welcome our, our, our you know, if it's not players, but whether it's customers who are coming to the, to the training centre, they could be commercial partners. I think what they see when they come into the place is a much nicer, uh, much more professional um, operation than before. Like we said, Mark, you've got all the essentials. You, you walk into this room, and you immediately smell the grass. Obviously, it's the groundsman's, groundsman's store. Talk to us how much this has changed, because you can see behind you, it, it's so close to the pitches now. Uh, with the, uh, the demand for pitches, and the, particularly the, um, the Deso show pitch that we have, not only have we invested in the site, but we've obviously invested quite considerably in, in additional um, equipment, and we can see one of the tractors here, in fact two of the tractors here that um, are used and this is just one of the sites that Rob and his team use. He does have uh, other stores around the, sta uh, around the site. Um, it is quite something and it's, as, it's, more, it's more stuff I've, than I've ever seen at a training ground I have to say but Rob puts it to good use because you've seen the state of the pictures, they are in fantastic order, um, every one of them and the Deso surface is, is like an absolute carpet as indeed it should be. Yeah, we'll, we'll go on to talk about the, the pitches and the changes of the pitches a little bit later on when we speak to Lee Bromby and Emma Humphreys. Um, but it's key, isn't it, that when, when you put so much money into developing the pitches and making sure they're exactly the same as the John Smith Stadium, 
that you have the equipment and the ground staff then to make sure that, that they're well groomed? Oh yeah, absolutely. There's no point um, the amount of money that's been spent on all of the pitches and then not providing the team with the tools to make sure that the pitches are, uh, are absolutely in top form and, and the manager and the coaches will demand that quite rightly. Um, and they, uh, they, they have a plan you know, throughout the week how they rotate the pitches so that we don't ever overuse a pitch. No, they, I don't think Rob and his team can complain about the, uh, the amount of equipment they've got here. I can complain about this mask, but not about <laughs> the amount of equipment. Okay, so this is one section, Mark, of the energy centre, isn't it? So this is the very glamorous boiler room um, that we've, uh, we've come into today. So everything you can see inside here is, uh, so this, this is the boiler. Uh, and the equipment over here feeds the, uh, the pipes. This is all for the undersoil heating for the Deso surface. I understand there's 21 miles of pipe required to go from here uh, over and through the Deso surface to make sure that it's always playable even in the uh, most inclement of weather. So this was obviously a huge part of the investment um, to ensure that we've got exactly the same surface, playing surface, as we've got at the John Smith Stadium. Um, but it does require a lot of looking after, but as, uh, as no doubt you will see, it is in pristine condition and it's uh, very much the show surface. Absolutely, this, this, the energy centre, obviously this is just a part of it, but this was one of the first parts of, of the development, wasn't it? It was, well it soon became apparent that we were, there, was, there were so many people either working here, playing here or, or whatever was needed, that we just didn't have the utility structure, infrastructure I should say, uh, to support everything we wanted to achieve. So this is a brand new energy centre as we mentioned earlier. This is just a very small part of it and you can see how much has gone into this and then obviously everything else helps to feed uh, the pop-ups. Um, shortly we'll see the brand new water tank that holds a colossal amount of water which feeds all of the pitches uh, across the site. Um, every pitch is serviced with pop-up uh, irrigation. Um, uh, so there's no more dragging, Every, all the pitches get uh, watered equally throughout the year. Being Yorkshire, luckily we don't have to water it too much uh, <laughs> artificially, so thank you thank for the element. But yes, the, the energy centre was a huge part of the investment. Again, like anything, we've created a fantastic training centre, but without the equipment to operate it properly, we wouldn't have made the, uh, the most of it. Okay, Mark, so we've come out of the boiler room and you can hear the pumps go in behind us. Talk us through what this is and what this does. So this, these are the water pumps, so you've seen the boiler room um, uh, that obviously has the pipes uh, that service the uh, undersoil heating. This is the pipes now that uh, push water around the site for the pop-up irrigation that we've got on all of the pitches. So you can hear it's working away at the moment. Um, so this is a brand new installation uh, because again the pitches require uh, we look into a bit more science going into the way we water the pitches, how often we water them, when we water them and so forth. What you can see behind you here is a brand new water tank. Um, the water tank is nearly twice the size of the previous water tank. Um, not sure how much water exactly, I think I said colossal earlier, but it, it does hold an enormous amount of water because we uh, it means that every pitch now can be serviced from here, whereas previously the ground staff had to use different pipes um, and drag along uh, irrigation. This now can all be serviced from, from one area. So, so before this was brought into place, am I right in saying that the ground staff, if they wanted to water uh, the two pitches over there and the one there, they couldn't do that at once? Not at once, no. No, absolutely. So this allows uh, irrigation on the site, you know, all at the same time if that's what we want, or as I say, specifically uh, dependent on when the uh, the guys are, are, have got their regime for tending the pitches, which is different from the deso than it is to some of the other training surfaces. Then they can water them at different times if they want to now. Okay, Mark. So now we're we're in. The media office space obviously somewhere i know very well but flashback a couple of years ago and where you're standing now was very different wasn't it yeah my understanding was this is was part of the bar area uh, when canal side um, 
was uh, was open to the public, and there were there were bar facilities here. So this was uh, part of the bar uh, bar area. Obviously, you'll probably pay testament to the fact that you've now yeah. got much more space to work in. You're banged aside where the media come and uh, and uh, come and uh, talk to Carlos and the coaches and the players and so forth. Um, you're not in a porter cabin anymore, so I guess that's a, a, that's a benefit to you. And obviously, again, um, we've, we've uh, with the development, particularly Premier League requirements when we're in the Premier League, um, has obviously meant that you've now got the IT infrastructure that means you bang up to date for everything uh, that you require in terms of uh, our media output, social media, digital output and so forth. Absolutely. I, I, I can speak personally and say that um, for the marketing and communications department, uh, this office is, is really helpful for us. The fact that we're working so close together and having the, the media room to do interviews in is, is fantastic because it's so close to us now, which is really good. Talking of the media room, the press conference room, let's go and have a look at that because a lot's changed in that as well. Yeah. So yeah, Mark, we're in the press conference room now. Uh, I, again, can say personally that it's changed quite a lot, but Talk, talk us through how important it was that we got these facilities first of all up to scratch. I, look, I think it's important that you know the media is a huge part of um, any football club, and the facilities we offer our media partners are, are very important. Um, it's not the most important thing, but I think you would admit, um, yeah. given the department you work in, how we treat our media partners, the facilities that we uh, provide both them, yourself manager players everyone who is is involved in the interviews um, with the best facilities possible um, we've managed to create a hugely Huddersfield town branded media center of the highest quality that I think we can all be really really proud of and um, I think our media partners uh, accept that we've done a lot of work in this area and I think that actually helps our relationship with um, with all of our media partners as well absolutely I think the, the small things go a long way so the, the fact that there's a platform here for the cameras to go above where people will sit. We've got the TV screens obviously behind, which again it benefits the commercial aspect then because I, I can imagine a lot of supporters don't see uh, the, the work that goes in in terms of the commercial side, in terms of getting people on the backdrops, off the backdrops, working deals around that by having uh, electric TV screens behind means that you can take or add people onto backdrops whenever we want, which then reduces in the long term financial cost as well, which is beneficial. Well, again, it's, it's smart use of technology that's come into the marketplace in the last couple of years and Town are one of the first clubs to adopt this, to be fair. Um, not, not that many clubs have done it. And it's hugely important to us as a, as a football club, as a championship football club, it's hugely important to us that we are professional in everything we do. And I think the, the whole of the um, the media setup here just just tells our you know our media partners and hopefully our fans that we are incredibly serious about what we do, very professional in what we provide for you guys, and also for the um, for our media partners who I, who I mentioned consistently. Sorry, but uh, yeah, I think everything just smacks of, of professionalism. And one thing the site has now, and there's still a bit of work to do in just 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 um, some tidying up around the place. But the whole site now is hugely professional for both the players, for the staff that work here, um, for our visitors that come here and our commercial partners when they come here obviously are equally impressed and that's important to us. So we've heard about how the developments at Canal Side off the pitch help with the running of the training ground, but now let's go and see Head of Football Operations Lee Bromby to see how they're helping the first team players and the support staff. My first day it was uh, an open gym, it was a public site, um, so the changes that, that we've made, although uh, we're still on the same, the same site, it, it's changed a lot, the quality of, um, of everything really. I think, um, and it was really difficult at that, that time when you know, you're sharing a gym with the public, there's, there was access, there was a bar here, it was like a social club, um, you know, people, there was balls um, and, and sort of, it didn't have that feel of a, a sort of a professional training ground. I think Premier League, uh, I think the investment's been high, um, I think, like you said, improving that professionalism, um, the provisions within what we're doing here, so if you look at really simply the food, 
um, the kitchens that have developed over that time and, and the staffing around that has been massive. Um, the academy didn't have a gym before the Premier League years so one thing the club have invested into is one of the best, best gyms I've seen as an academy. Um, the pitches, so really, probably the hardest thing to understand is the quality of the pitches and trying to recreate uh, the standard of pitches you see now uh, in the stadiums. Um, so the academy pitches, we've had huge, huge investment in, in the academy pitches because to develop the players, um, to play with speed and with the technical technical ability that you have to have now, we had to improve the pitches. Um, so little things like that over the years, as um, or the last two years, has really helped us move forward as a club. Um, I think the first team also the the pitches when you come here and look now, the standard of pitches is so high for any training ground that I've been at. The investment we've put into the Deso pitch, so. You know they're millions of pounds, and you know we've got lighting around the training ground so we can play evening games. The level of the the pitch that we have here, even you know when Carlos and his team came in, are really excited by that. Um, but there's other things as well, like the um, which you might not notice is the the video. So Carlos is and, and David Wagner at that time was really big on the videos, and we've got actually screens on every pitch. So if you walk around this screen footage on the pitches so the players can see, get feedback live. So that's, you know, there's some little changes that you maybe don't notice, but it's, it's like, um, it's really important to how we work every day. So Broms, we've just come out of your office, two doors next to you. Talk us through who whose offices they are and how important it is it that you're close to them. Yeah, I think uh, it was quite a big step when we moved into these offices and um, obviously it helps with communication. So. Uh, up on this floor you've got uh, the head coach, so you've got his office, uh, next to that you've got the coaches, so Danny Schofield's in there, Paul Clement and the two assistant coaches, and then myself next door, so it's that constant communication, uh, we're really close obviously in terms of um, space, so it, it's been key really, to, and especially to create that uh, aligned communication and relationships, which is really important when there's so much going on. Yeah, and the workflow is really important, yeah. isn't it? If we move down the corridor here in the first team. Yeah. So what, what's this room first of all? Here? So this is a this is a meeting room. So this is where um, anyone in the club, so that's the academy, uh, anyone at first team can sort of schedule meetings. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes we've had um, like we, we call the football forum meeting, which is like a board meeting and. The guys from the stadium will come up. Um, so Mark Devlin, Phil, um, sometimes the uh, finance directors, and you can hold meetings in here. Um, also with players as well. Yeah. So you'll see quite a lot with the way Carlos works. Is uh, the coaches are constantly having um, sort of meetings. These um, obviously they've got big TVs in there. And they can go through the games and things. And yeah, so it's, a, it's an important space. Uh, and in here. It's an important room, isn't it, this one? Key room, yeah, also as well. So we've got the analysis department. Should we have a walk in? Yeah, we've got the analysis department in here. In here we've got uh, every pitch that uh, that can be watched from in here. So they can be videoed. We can um, send the footage out to the players. Obviously, Carlos sometimes will watch from here. Yeah. Um, so we've got a camera on every pitch, which, um, which is really important. Um, and these guys are the hardest working at the club. There's a lot of individual work, so the players get, um, we call them compacts, so they get like sort of key information after every training session, after every game. Um, and because Carlos's way of playing is so specific, um, these guys have got to have such an, uh, a depth of understanding of that. Um, and the video just brings it to life in the clips. So. So it's really important and really valuable for the players. Yeah, absolutely, I can imagine. And then the final room just opposite us here. Uh, what, what's in this room? So this is the uh, the scouts. So okay. this is where the scouts will come in and, and, and hold their meetings. I spend quite a lot of time in there as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, so this is this is sort of the scouts and where they where they work from as well. We won't go in because they'll probably have names. <laughs> they'll have names and uh, things up there that we might not be able to share. Okay, so Lee, also on this floor of the first team building, a gym. 
Yeah, so um, this is sort of the warm up area where the guys can come and do pre act and um, sort of a lot of in injury prevention work. Um, this, this works really well because you've got the performance and medical staff as well. Um, so you can see it's all close as well. Uh, so in terms of the staff that would sit in here, you've got the performance staff uh, and then also the medical staff. So again, again it's, a, it's a key area and it's where you'll see a lot of players um, sort of before training, after training and then sort of the, the rehab work would go on in here as well. Uh, and like you said, there's the medical guys, uh, the strength and conditioning guys, but to have them so close together as well, it's, it's all about that workflow, like you said, it's really beneficial that they can work closely together. Yeah, I think the, this, um, obviously these work really closely together anyway because, you know, the injuries and the rehab work yeah. and things, so that, they're, they're sort of really closely aligned as well. Perfect. And it's worth mentioning, this is all new, isn't it? Uh, obviously, when we were promoted to the Premier League. Yeah, I think the, you know, if you look at some other things in here that we, we've sort of done well, is, you know, most clubs wouldn't have like an Alter G, which to, I think to most supporters would understand this now. This was a key bit of machinery that when I was at Leeds for return to train. So, not a lot of clubs would have sort of this equipment, and the club have invested in said, these sort of things to make sure we've got. Uh, that sort, that level of equipment, you'd have to outsource this. Um, yeah. So when I was playing return from injury, I had to go to the university uh, to try and go on this sort of equipment. The club have invested in to, to sort of equipment at this level. Fantastic. And let's go and have a look downstairs now in, in the first team building. Okay, so Broms, we come down the stairs, we come past the kit man's room, yes. and we're in another gym. Yeah. So I think yeah, another. Uh, sort of area of football which has moved on a lot is the, the physical side so it's really important to have um, you know state-of-the-art gyms and, and the equipment for the players and um, there's much more awareness about that now so obviously having two gyms on site is, is sort of fantastic and it helps us keep the, the session sort of individual and unit based um, so yeah this, this works really well because one is close to the dressing room um, and, and two, the, the players can access it easily as well. When you started here, obviously this yeah. wasn't here. The first team players shared the gym, didn't they, with the public? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, um, it helps with, you know, we've got a lot of players at the club um, and this helps sort of use this area just for the first team players. Um, you know, the, the academy gym's a lot bigger, um, but this, this space is, is key for the first team players and it's, like I said, just because of location wise, it's close to the dressing rooms and things, it's, it, it makes that a lot easier for the players uh, to access. Yeah, it helps with their individual plans as well, doesn't it? Because they do a lot of work yeah. individually on areas that they need to improve in, especially the, the strength side. Having I mean, yeah. this so close and the guys just upstairs, I yeah. that really helps. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, you know, the way the flow, the flow of the training ground, and like I said, this building has really helped us, us move on uh, as a club. And you've got the area upstairs, which is used for a lot of activation, a lot of fitness work. And then this area is used for, for just strength. Yeah. And then we'll go through here, if you want to yeah. tell us what, what's going through here. So I presume we're going through from what you said to the dressing room area. Yeah. So we've got the, the medical, Sort of the medical areas, so yeah, so this is where the treatment that happen, the players would come in and have all the subjectives, uh, checking with the physios if they're injured. Um, so this, this area is just used specifically for, for the physios and, and for treatment. And then opposite, there's a sauna as well, obviously, due to COVID, I presume that's, that's not shut use down. anymore, but yeah, no access and out of use at the minute, so <laughs> yeah, it's part of their recovery, yeah, uh, program and strategy and things, so. Absolutely, and then the dressing room area. This yeah. this has changed a lot, hasn't it? Especially since when when you first arrived. Yeah, I mean we were uh, we were getting changed in port cabins, the staff and and, and the players. So um, yeah, I think this is important for the players, particularly like um, the design of it that everyone's just in one room. Uh, yeah. Everyone's got their own specific place and sort of name plated. Um, so yeah, we do particularly with the B team and, and the first team, to actually get into to this dressing room, you've got to play a lot of first team games mm -hmm. um, for the club. So 
the guys that are in here have sort of earned the place within the yeah. dressing room. Uh, and obviously it's a little bit nicer than, than the academy dressing rooms. Um, mm. So yeah, it's been, this has been, been a positive as well because it, it keeps everyone together and it, it feels feels really nice in here as well. Yeah, it's the real important. like players zone, isn't it? This. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's professional. Um, you know, it's not too uh, too lavish, uh, but it's it's a good space for the players. Okay, so we come out of the dressing room and into this room, which I presume is the analyst suite. Yeah, yeah, again. Um, socially distanced chairs, as you can see, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think again it's like just moving forward all the time as a club and always thinking how can we, um, you know, be more effective at what we're delivering. So yeah. um, obviously the, the analysis is a big part of what we do, and this is where a lot of the meetings will be held for the teams. Um, so we show a lot of videos in here, again, both the academy and first team, so it gets used regular. Um, and I think that the sort of visual side of the game and, and the, the clips and the tactical side of the game has moved on so much that it's so important to have this, this type of equipment and this facility um, and yeah it, it gets used a lot um, but I think it's important to have a space that's that's just for this. So some of the software that we use, um, of it, it's like if you can imagine Monday Night Football with uh, yeah. uh, with the guys on on Sky Sports, it, it's similar to that. That they can they can show the the clips exactly the same way and change where and move people where we'd like the players. So it's that real interactive uh, feel, and obviously that's the software which you saw with the guys upstairs that they've been marking up and clipping and and things. So it's really powerful when it's used in that way. It's just trying to bring everything to life. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of the, um, a lot of the clubs now are using this sort of software and and, and seeing the value in it. And um, and obviously, we're one of those clubs that wants to do that throughout the academy, throughout the first team. Uh, so aligning all the practices, and that's why it's key to have somewhere like this where you can come and show the players. Um, you can use the same clips, so everything's aligned across the club. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a real positive for us. So we've come out of the first team building onto the 4G pitch. Yeah. This is all very temporary, I presume, yeah. because of the COVID-19 situation. Yeah, I think it's just um, adapting to life as it is now and um, you know, making, putting all the measures in place and, and following the medical advice that um, we've had to bring some like temporary structures in place. So yeah, um, yeah, difficult times because you know being really adaptable as a club's important, and you know we've got quite a few structures up now which you can see. Yeah. Um, and then the next problems are we're going to have to heat all these places uh, and, and things like that. But yeah, the club have been excellent in terms of supporting what we've needed. Um, they've never said no to doing things like this, which is which is excellent and, and making the most of the situation. Yeah, and we can see one of the screens. I presume yeah. that you were talking to us about earlier uh, yeah. when they're pitch side and they can do yeah. that analysis. Obviously, that's in here temporarily yeah. Yeah. Uh, for meetings, I presume. Yeah. Um, but that that's the type of screen that supporters wouldn't necessarily see on a day-to-day -day basis out on training pitches. Yeah, so what we can do with this is, uh, this is the only movable we've gone. The others have got fixed uh, sort of TVs and videos on, on the pitches. So this one we can move about. We generally use it for the academy, but within this period, um, Carlos has been using this for his uh, like unit meetings and, and things like that. So that, that's really helped in, in this time. Um, but like I said, yeah, we try to we try to replicate everything we do with the first team with the academy, obviously not at the same level, uh, but making sure that the practices are the same. So, so yeah, predominantly this one's used for the, for the academy. Perfect. Let's go and check out the canteen and the yeah. players' lounge, because that's another yeah. really important part, isn't it? Perfect, yeah. The players' lounge. So now we're here in what I would presume is the players' lounge. Yeah. How important is that, first of all, for the players to kind of have an area to come and kind of relax and recuperate when they're doing uh, double intense sessions that, that Carlos Corbran puts them through? Yeah, I think it's key, really. I think, um, obviously, the idea of this was having a, a space where 
the players feel comfortable and, and relaxed whilst they're here. And I think, um, you know, you can see by the way it's laid out, um, you know, with the table tennis and the darts and sort of the, the games and it's trying to create that sort of feel where the, the players want to be here and it's not, yeah. um, you know, they're not just stuck in the dressing room sitting around because like you said, Carlos, you know, does a lot of double sessions and double training and the players are here for quite a long time having meetings and things mm -hmm. and try to create an environment where it's quite relaxed. Um, I think we've used this quite well throughout the club, you know, some of the coaches come in with uh, the players and have meetings and it feels more relaxed. It's not like classroom based. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's important, you know, for the players to be able to relax in between sessions or before sessions and feel feel they can be around the building. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's, like I said, it's been a positive step forward again and something that um, that's important to us. Um, you know, that the, the, the players do feel like part of the club and comfortable being here. Yeah. So we just come out of the players' lounge there and straight into the dining area and the canteen. This area is really important again, which we, we touched on in there, that it's got a feel that the players want to be here eating and, and, and the food is at such a level now that we want every player eating here. Um, you know, we have the whole club in here, as you, not now at the minute because of COVID, but you know, the, the academy, the staff, uh, the first team players, they all eat in here together. Um, so it's a really, it's a really important area. Um, but the nutrition for me is something that has, has moved on so far from from when I was playing, and in the last few years, it's moved in it's such an important area for, for the players. Perfect. Let's go and have a look at the uh, training pitches. So this is one of the biggest changes, isn't it? This this pitch it used to be a car park. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, since I've been here, this is the, the sort of one of the biggest investments. So the idea of this was to replicate the match pitch. Yeah. Um, so this is a, it's a Deso pitch. It's got undersoil eating. It's got the cameras in. It's got the floodlight, so we can train at any time. We can replicate that evening feel. Um, so this has probably been one of the, the biggest investments. Um, to try and replicate that match day feel and that standard of a, a match day pitch, um, and yeah, this is so this has been in place a year. Um, so yeah, you can you can see by the standard of the pitch, and this is where the first team would train on a on a Thursday and a Friday. Yeah. It was one of the first parts of phase one of the development here, yeah. wasn't it? This pitch. Yeah. How important is it to have the same pitch, the same feel at the training ground? Yeah. Then when you go to the John Smith Stadium for your home game, yeah. how important is that kind of symmetry across the two? Yeah, I mean, it might, it might sound really, really trivial, but it's massive. Um, I think for the players to be playing on the, on the same surface, uh, you know, it's not too hard, not too soft, the, the, the exact roll of the ball, um, because we're playing at an elite level, and, it, and you have to try and replicate that to the best of you can, and it might seem obviously to everyone else and supporters, it's like a, a minute thing. Um, and, and trying to do that and trying to replicate that match day feel um, is, is, is hard to do, unless you've got the investment of, of something like this. And like you said, the, the camera's there that yeah. goes straight to the analyst's room, yeah. the floodlights as well. It, it means yeah. that Carlos can, can pretty much train whenever he wants, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, I think with, like, with the undersoil eating, and, and, things like that for this pitch it just makes sure we don't have to then train at a different facility or somewhere else when the, when the weather does become a lot worse um, and like I said again with the with the cameras and you can see uh, the TV which we've got over there as well yeah. so they will use that a lot they'll, sh they'll show the sessions they'll show the live feedback so I think um, you know it's, re it's really important to have this this sort of level of pitch um, the undersoil heating is a good point actually. Yeah. I remember uh, on Sky Sports News there was videos of staff and academy players yeah. shoveling the snow off the pitches, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we, I, I remember the days when obviously <laughs> I was an academy manager and a coach and we'd have to move the, uh, you know, move all the sheets with all the lads. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it, it just takes that worry away from not being able to train. Um, 
and yeah, it's something that was really important for the club and, and like I said, it's been a really good investment and it's been a, a, a huge step forward for us to be able to put this in place. Yeah. And this is one of three training pitches, isn't yeah. it? The others are obviously yeah. on the other side of the facility, yeah. but it, it means that for the ground staff especially, that yeah. they can separate when each session yeah. is on which pitch to, to yeah. help with the growth so yeah that the grass is always the same length it's always yeah. got the similar feel yeah i think the, the way carlos works he, he works a lot of individual a lot of unit he uses a lot of pitches so it's key that and, and also the standard of the pitches are, are the same so the, the two pitches um that we do use a lot for the work during the week are just as important and then and then this on a Thursday and a Friday will give you that that sort of match day feel um, so yeah it, it's valuable that the pitches and the, the standard of the pitches is huge thanks for telling us all about the first team facilities Broms uh, now we're gonna head over to see more about the Academy and and how that fits into the whole training ground development and to do that we're going to see academy manager Amir Humphreys who'll tell us all about the pitches that Lee mentioned to us earlier alongside education and other valuable valuable points. Okay so now we're here in the academy office I'm joined by Amir Humphreys the academy manager. Am's you okay? Hi Adam. Uh, so talk us through who sits where and how the academy staff all work together. Um, so we've always felt it's really important to get all the staff from across the different departments in one room so, so we can share ideas and thoughts throughout the day. So, so basically everyone's in this office, myself and, and Karen Jagger um, on this desk over here and then the coaches in that area and then sports science analysis over here. So it can be quite hectic and quite a lot of talking going on but we but we like that sort of shared shared space where we can just go, go through ideas and thoughts throughout the day. How different is this to when we were in the porter cabins obviously before you got this more permanent structure? Um, yeah obviously it's a massive step forward from where we were just in terms of um, facilities being able to have um, extra monitors and, and stuff at our desk. Okay, so Andrew we've just come out of the academy office and we've passed one door here and there's another one just here. So we're going to the, the classroom now. Oh, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So talk us through, first of all, uh, the classrooms and, and how they've differed from what we've had in the past. Um, so over the summer we moved out of the porter cabins, which are over the other side of the, the training ground, into these permanent uh, spaces. So we've got two, two classrooms that are, that are the same size, um, which the players use for college as they're doing now so Mondays and Thursday mornings um, and then they also use the laptops and, and the space for unit reviews, individual clips, um, small team meetings where, where the players might get up and present and things like that. Okay. The, the educational work is really important here, there's an extra emphasis isn't there? Yeah essentially it's a massive part of what we do, it's not like it's not separate to the football, it's, it's joint with it. Um, generally people that do well in the classroom will do well on the pitch as well. Absolutely, and there's a lot of first year scholars here obviously at, at Huddersfield Town. In the original plans that we put together for the training ground, there was obviously on the top floor accommodation for those scholars. Obviously we don't have that building yet after phase one has been completed. What does that mean for the, for the first year scholars? What, where are they going to be staying? Yeah, I think when, when the plans were put together, the ideal scenario was for, for the, the scholars to be accommodated here at, at, at the training ground, but obviously that wasn't possible yet, so, so we had to find another solution, and we managed to get um, the first year scholars uh, accommodation at Rishworth School in, in Rishworth, which is about um, 25 minutes away from here. Um, so, so all the lads that you see now, they, they live at the school, um, they get transport into the training ground every day, um, and it's a great environment for them really, they, they get to see what elite environments look like away from the training ground and that's uh, in sport and in education, so there's, there's other students there that might be going to the Olympics next year, that's the sort of level we're talking about and, and it's one of the best schools in the area so it's a really good partnership for us. To have that interaction like you say with, with other pupils and they've also got top class facilities at Rishworth as well that they can use. Yeah, exactly. The, the other alternative is to be uh, with a host family dotted around Huddersfield, which has its benefits, but also 
sometimes the players can be quite isolated being stuck out in, in the, on the outskirts of Huddersfield without too much to do so at least now they're all together um, which has been great for their togetherness and, and team spirit and like I say all the facilities at Rishworth so, so they've got stuff they can do in the evenings um, whatever that might be. Okay so we're going into the academy gym now it's a massive massive room isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a great space for us to use. Obviously, we've got we've got this space here, which is mainly for mobility and preactivation and that sort of stuff. Then we've got the squat racks and more heavier weights across the back of the room. In terms of other academy gyms around the country, how does this one compare? I don't think it's up there with with some of the best in the area now. It's got everything we need to be honest. And I don't think gyms have to be too fancy. I think it's about doing the basics really well. So this gym's perfect for what for what we try and do. And, and the physio room's just through there as well, isn't it? It's really key that they have close contact with the players. Yeah, yeah. So we encourage the players to use the, the gym in their own time and be in here as much as they can, really, if they're not, if they're not on the pitch. So it's great to just have the physio, physios next door if they need, if they need help or, or somebody to watch over them or spot them on, on an exercise. So it's great having the physio, physio so close. Yeah, absolutely. And the pitches, obviously, are just over there. Um, Lee Romby again told us how good they were and how much work's gone into them. Let's go and check those pictures out. So as we're walking up here, we've come over the canal yep. and immediately you can notice a huge difference, can't you? Yeah, yeah. So this road didn't exist before. This was just a mud track up to the pitches. So pretty clear to see it makes a huge difference for the feel as you come up to the, the training pitches now there's a really special feel when you come up to it it's our own little secluded area to train in um, and for opposition um, other people spectators people that are coming to watch the games it's just a much more professional um, setting now um, and obviously the road's great for access for paramedics um, people can just drive straight up to the pitches now which has been great um, especially in these Covid times, um, so they don't even have to enter the training ground down there, we can just come straight up to the pitches, yeah. train or play, play the matches, it's been great. I think professional is that key word there, immediately when, when you're walking up here, the, the tarmac road, the trees that have been planted all the way around, it, it just changes the whole feel day to day, doesn't it, for the academy class? Yeah, yeah. we've really noticed the difference with the players, just, just they really want to be up here now, which, which hasn't always been the case in the past, where you've got to traipse through through mud and it's almost a bit of hassle to get up, up to the pitches where now it's 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 so much more professional it, it looks great and the players just want to come up here and train let's go and have a look at the pitches okay so ems we've, we've come up to the academy pitches was there two three pitches up here yeah two and three quarters it's, the, the space is incredible and it's just over from the training ground isn't it just over from the canal yeah it's an unbelievable setting up here now um, and the work that's gone on the pitches over the last 18 months has made made such a difference to the way we can train to be honest um, when we when we, we reviewed what was happening when players were going to train with the first team traditionally going back three or four years ago the main thing they were struggling with was the was just the speed of the ball and the speed speed of the decisions they had to make in training and that that mainly just come down to the difference in the training surfaces that they were training on not so much the players ability um, they were training on really slow bumpy pitches if you go back even another couple of years that they were training at Leeds Road complex down the road which is almost a park pitch so to go from that to this in in six or seven years made such a big difference to what we can do now um, just just the speed that we can train at the speed that the ball moves makes such a big difference so when they go down go down to train with the first team it's it's very similar now we can recreate something that's that's very similar to what they're going to get down there the, the pitches have developed loads, haven't they? Yeah. How long did the work take up here and, and how impressed are you now with it? Because it, they pretty much mirror the pitches, don't they? Just yeah. beyond the canal back at, at Canal Side. Yeah, yeah, they're almost identical. Um, it took 12 months of real work on them. Um, these pitches weren't in use at all last season. Um, um, so, yeah, it was a lot of work went into them, a lot, a lot of money, um, which, which we're really grateful for. It's made, it's made a massive difference. and. Um, and I think it really will over the next couple of years when players get really used to training on this surface. What was your first reaction when you came up here and, and it was all pretty much done? Um, it's just a great setting. It's, it's, it's isolated, it's away from everywhere. It's, 
it looks great, especially on, on, a, on a sunnier day. It looks absolutely great up here. The players love being up here. Um, the players just want to spend spend the whole day up here and don't, they don't tend not to even want to go back over the canal when they're up here, um, so, which is exactly what we, we try and create. Um, players just, just loving being outside and practicing and, and getting better, which is perfect for them. Okay, so we've looked at the fantastic facilities and improvements that have been made at Huddersfield Town's training ground. Now for the final word, I'll be rejoined by Chief Executive Mark Devlin. Mark, this is phase one completed, isn't it? What are the plans further afield in the future for Canal Side? Yeah, we're very, very, very proud of what's been achieved so far. Uh, we recognise that it's... Um, uh, not quite everything that was put into the initial plan, uh, no point in, in beating around the bush there. Um, but as a championship training facility, we're very, very proud of the facilities we've laid on here and created for staff, for players, for the management, and obviously all our, our media partners and visitors to the site. So it's, it's a very, very, very professional training ground. Um, we will continue to listen to the coaches, to the players for how they would develop the site. We know that there are, we know that there are other improvements we can make to it. We have to be sensible in terms of timing those um, uh, those improvements. They have to, you know, we are in the middle of a of a uh, of a coronavirus um, pandemic. Uh, that's had an effect on every football club's um, uh, uh, sort of finances, including these cheap masks that we need to throw out. Um, <laughs> That's had, a, that's had an effect and so the first things first we've created a, a fantastic facility already we accept that there's more that can be done we will look at doing that over the course of the next few years uh, we can't give any exact time scales on that because at the moment we are in the middle of a pandemic that has, has affected our finances as it has right across football so we need to be sensible first and foremost now we need to make sure we keep the football club in a good place um, safe for the long term do everything we can so that the club comes out of this pandemic situation in a healthy position so that we can push on afterwards and part of that uh, development and pushing on we'll obviously be looking to see how we can develop this site further um, but it's now now that we've got to this stage it's not our priority our priority now is to make sure the club is safe and on a good operational and financial footing um, and then of course over the next few years we can look at developing this site further because there is plenty more we can do and we accept that but um, all of it has to be put into uh, a, a, it has to be pre-thought through planned properly and financed properly as well.